city will not be able to accommodate the surge in migrants who have sought sanctuary in the city and their right to worry. And we the are here government- once again to talk about Anna becoming more and more based on the topic of immigration. Of course, she's not really based on the topic of immigration. She's just, uh, let's just say that she's had a pretty good run here recently now that she's seeing exactly what unfettered immigration can actually do uh, to communities. But uh, before we get started, I want you guys to know that uh, Monday's video will be in the description box, more than likely in the end card and probably in the comment section of this video here. So make sure you guys watch that one. This is kind of a follow up to that video there because. That video right there, if I'd have actually included what I'm about to show you guys now, that video probably would have been about an hour and 10 minutes. Now, maybe I could shorten this thing up the way I've kind of got it set up. So let's see if we can actually do this and let's see if we can actually hit every single point in this video. But I want to focus more and more and more on the political ramifications of what happens when people begin to actually wake up to uh, what's going on in their communities as far as the... uh, border crisis is concerned and why it is that all this unfettered immigration is in fact a problem. Now, one more thing before we get to this or before we get to this little montage to kind of take you guys back, I want to go ahead and tell you guys now, the video that's going to be out on the gangs, that's going to be a relatively lengthy video. It's going to be out on Wednesday talking about the Venezuelan gangs, of course, not just the Venezuelan gangs, but also maybe a possible resurgence of MS-13 and others uh, that could be coming along with that. So make sure you guys stick around for that one as well. There's also going to be another video that's going to be released right around noon on Tuesday, which is about the situation in Miami, seeing ideas that they chose to basically break up with spring break. But let's go ahead and dive into this. So what's the topic? The topic is obviously immigration, the cost of immigration, especially in these cities, these very, very blue cities. And of course, the two cities we're going to be talking about the most in this video are going to be Denver and of course, Chicago. We talked about New York in the previous video. I figured it might be a good idea to kind of move on from that because we're still kind of going off of a Anna's 17-minute monologue the other night on TYT. But still, we got to get into this. So what's happened in the past week? Well, here's a nice little montage. Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed. By an illegal. But I, that's not a big thing, okay? What, what's the big thing? Yeah, about no, 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 I, was, I, I actually wasn't even going to ask about that. I was just going to ask. Use the word it. illegal when talking about the man who allegedly killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should, it's undocumented. And look. So Lake and Riley, as you guys know, killed by a migrant. We're also finding out that not only was his wife here illegally, we're also finding out that his brother was here illegally. If you just give it some more time, more and more information will come out. He was released in New York because they claim they did not have enough room in their jails to house him. Woke DA Alvin Bragg, woke DA of New York. Don't worry, he'll be coming up a lot in the video on Wednesday. Also, to go on top of that, Joe Biden basically, in a way, apologizes to the person who murdered Lake and Riley by basically saying that, look, uh, I shouldn't have called him uh, an illegal. I should have called him undocumented bunch of BS, and obviously Nancy Pelosi as well. That's how backwards we've gotten on the topic of immigration. But it isn't really me or the viewing audience that's backwards. It's mostly the left-wing woke lunatics out there who uh, don't want to acknowledge what crime really and truly is. But still, at the same time, there's going to be more videos on that. I want to focus for the most part on this topic here. And obviously, this administration with this current border crisis, they've obviously lost their minds. Some people think that maybe it's just the old Democratic Party is gone. I personally say that they've always been this way because they always find a way to, how do I say, it, change politics when it's no longer uh, popular for them to do or when the new thing is popular. Basically, it's just a bunch of grifters. At one point in time, the Democratic Party used to be in favor of closing the border. And now, of course, they're not in favor of closing the border, which, of course, that will come up more so towards the end. But with that right there being said, what's the real issue here? Well, the issue right now is obviously the cost of everything. And of course, it also affects everything else in the community. It's not just the police departments that get affected. It's not just fire and EMS. It's other services as well. Services that, quite frankly, provide a lot of good to the neighborhoods. But before we go any further, let's take a look at this situation in Denver, because this situation in Denver will kind of give you a bit of an idea of why it is that black voters in Chicago are, in fact, looking to vote Republican this coming cycle. So New York is left to pick up the tab, and it ain't cheap, as local leaders in Denver have recently learned their growing migrant population. 
We are announcing today we will make some changes both uh, to our services at DMV and to our services on Parks and Rec. Uh, what that looks like for DMV is we are no longer um, taking vehicle registrations in person. We will move those to online. We will start rotating weekly DMV closures starting on March 4th. Our central spot at Tremont will stay open uh, permanently, but our other satellite spots will rotate, uh, closing one week at a time. We will have folks that are hourly workers that will have fewer hours. If we reduce your hours and you're an on-call worker, that's true. We will have on-call workers we won't hire for the summer we would have hired otherwise. We will also uh, have to make some hard decisions around reducing services for Parks and Rec heading into this summer and spring. Uh, that means beginning February 20th, we will reduce hours uh, at our rec centers. Our regional centers that are seven days will come back to six days. Uh, those sites that are six days will stay at six days, but will reduce hours. We are planning for the entire 2024 budget, so we believe we have to make it through this entire year. And so these, these changes will be in effect until we can get back to a balanced budget. We think it will take us the 2024 year. Denver, Colorado is a city that's not been reported on that much when it comes to the migrant crisis. If you go to YouTube and you just type in, uh, migrant crisis, Denver, or anything immigration related with Denver, Colorado, you're probably going to get a lot of what I'm showing you now. This story right here was obviously a story that TYT decided to play, which we'll get to more what Anna said here in a second. But the thing is this right here. This city right here is not as well talked about, mostly due to the media market, which is kind of strange to me because there's actually a story there that needs to be reported on. Heartbreaking stories out of Denver. Uh, Denver, Colorado is cutting their recreational department, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, Denver, Colorado has got this issue here. Or maybe there's a hospital that's completely overcrowded. Hospitals as a whole are completely overcrowded because of all the migrants. This, by the way, is them saying we got to treat illegals, those who are not actual citizens of the United States, those who are not actually naturalized citizens of the United States, ahead of people who were actually born and raised here. That's kind of how crazy that we've gotten here. I mean, how many times have I got to say this? Uh, illegals, migrants, they're getting all kinds of free stuff. Meanwhile, our veterans, of course, are still on the street and homeless. I mean, I say homeless vets before uh, migrants. That's just what I've got to say. It's just the way that it is. You know, we'd be taking care of our own before we take care of anybody who comes over here illegally. But of course, this administration does, in fact, have an agenda, which we'll talk about here shortly, because we got to talk about the situation in Chicago. But the situation in Denver, I think, is... Um, bit of a microcosm of what you can expect going forward because there's actually a lot more effects to this entire situation than you might would think on the surface. So recreational departments, what do they do? Well, rec departments are very important, especially for kids. And it's not just young kids. It's also kids who are about to go to high school or even early high school kids. The reason why they're so important is because they provide services like, I don't know, sports, coaching, that type of stuff there. And of course, and let me just play devil's advocate just for a very, very quick second. Let's say that you are somebody who is on the side of the migrants being here. Wouldn't you want migrants to be ingrained in U.S. culture? Wouldn't you want the migrants to actually assimilate? Wouldn't you want the migrants to not only assimilate, but wouldn't you want them to learn good old-fashioned American traditions, sports like, say, basketball, football, stuff like that? Wouldn't you want them to not get in trouble when they leave school in case they do get legalized, which I don't think they will. I think it's going to be a situation where we have a bunch of migrants that are just here. We'll talk more about that in a second. What I'm trying to say to you guys is this here. Uh, cutting recreational department funds, it does, in fact, have effects. But let's look at the actual story itself. ...hours at recreation centers. It's the first in a series of concessions as the city braces for a $180 million budget shortfall to fund migrant support efforts. Now, some are growing more frustrated by these initial budget cuts and say there will be negative consequences for families. Denver 7's Brandon Richard is following up for us tonight. Well, the city's decision to cut rec center hours not going over well with a lot of members of the community, including here in Montebello. We spoke with the community leader here who believes it will cause more harm than good. Well, that was only roughly 35 seconds. And the thing is this right here. What I'm going to do is do a bit of a switch room. I'm going to be putting a segment from Anna back in here in a second. Then we're going to come back to the, our recreational, uh, the recreation department here in a second because... I think there's something that the left oftentimes misses in each time that this type of issue comes up. Now, I just mentioned the recreational department, of course, the fact that they're cutting hours and obviously is a service to the community. The reason why it's a service is, like I said before, it provides activities for kids to do. 
A lot of these activities, by the way, keep kids out of trouble. Now, I know somebody's probably going to say, well, why can't these kids just play at home or play video games? Well, if they go home, they just end up playing video games. Now, I'm not against gaming, and I'm not against gamers. I play video games myself from time to time, even at my age. You guys can call me a big kid if you want to. But as I've said before, the big problem with video games is not the video games itself. It's the parents allowing the child to stay in front of the video game all day. You're running the risk of that. These kids need to be doing actual honest-to-God activities. Even if they're not here legally, they obviously need to be doing something. It creates a lot of boredom is basically what I'm trying to say. And when boredom begins to set in, people will start doing stupid things. But, of course, the left, they have shown you guys on several occasions that they are actually very, very much anti-sports. Which is a big reason why it is I'm wondering why they're trying to go woke. Because no lefties actually watch their product. But let's hop back to Anna very, very quickly about this situation as far as services are concerned. And then we're going to come right back to the recreational apartment situation, especially when an actual worker who actually heads up the situation there is actually telling you what's about to happen as a result or what's actually going on as a result of this uh, blatant agenda that's being pushed on the people of Denver, Colorado. Not just Denver, Colorado, but the people of the U.S. Over the migrant crisis. I certainly don't want to demonize the migrants because not a lot of what is happening is their fault. Um, I think that our mayor, our governor, as well as President Biden has to step in and make some changes to what is happening right now. Um, right now, it seems as if our borders are just open and that people are freely coming in and that there are no laws that are um, being followed in terms of um, immigration. Now, when you talk about the black communities here in the city of Chicago and you talk about the years of disinvestment in our communities, in our schools and all around us, and you see this amount of money being spent to people who have come from outside of this country, um, that is a problem for us. At a time where we're seeing increased crime because our children don't have things to do, they don't have jobs, and we're seeing this money being spent, and it's being spent on other people in communities that could really benefit for that money. Now, that right there was Chicago. Okay, Chicago is being affected by this. New York is being affected by this. And, of course, we were talking about Colorado earlier. And we're still, for the most part, talking about Colorado. Now, why did I bring Chicago up when talking about Colorado, or at least Denver? Well, the reason why is because the city of Denver is doing the exact same thing that Chicago is being forced to do, the exact same thing the city of New York is being, as being forced to do. The only difference is, is that Denver, of course, they are working with a much, much smaller population. But still, at the same time, while working with a smaller population, they still have to obviously fund their police departments. They still obviously have to fund certain other programs, also like recreational departments. Of course, they've got to do this. And by the way, it's not just Denver, Colorado. It's the surrounding small towns outside of it. The same thing is actually going on in Chicago, except in Chicago, it's a little bit more centralized to the city itself. Of course, we've talked about woke Mayor Brandon Johnson asking suburban towns outside Chicago to take these migrants in. Denver is beginning to experience the exact same thing. Boston has also experienced it too. But then again, though, a lot of the woke liberals in Boston were saying, oh, please bring them in, please, please, please bring them in, of course, only to find out that the migrants that are going in there are actually cooking and cleaning and stuff. Basically, they just recreated. I'm not really going to say it out loud, but of course, they're probably going to regret that someday. But still, the point is this right here. When you're throwing all your resources at other things that quite frankly should not actually be here, and I'm not saying this to sound anti-migrant, I'm saying this because quite frankly we need a border and you need to come through here the legal way. I'm not against migration at all or immigration at all as long as you do it the legal way. The resources that may need to get out to people are going to become fewer and far between, meaning they're going to become scarce. Or like recently in the city of Pittsburgh, today. Yeah, Susan, residents of the city will see a major change in the way police respond. They will no longer respond to calls that aren't considered in progress emergency. That means calls like criminal mischief, theft, harassment and most burglary alarms will all be handled by an enhanced telephone reporting unit. That means residents will file a police report over the phone. Officers will not respond unless it's an emergency. Also, between the hours of 3 a.m. and 7 a.m., there will be no officers at any of the six stations throughout the city. Call boxes that link directly to 911 have been installed for people to use in case of an emergency. And during the overnight shift, there will be as few as 20 officers to cover the entire city. 
The chief said today the data supports that. Yes, it's enough to cover the entire city in, in those hours when we have 8% of the time people are calling. I'm confident in the decisions that we make that it impacts this bureau and the city in a much better way than we have in the past. Now, the chief also acknowledging today that some of these changes are due to staffing shortages. He's down to 740 officers, well below the 850 they would like to have. Now, coming Three o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock, you're not going to have only 20 cops patrolling a city of about 600,000 people. That's metro. It's not including the surrounding areas or the rest. What, what I'm saying is this right here. You got to make cuts. You got to make budget cuts. New York City, by the way, you're about to go into summer. What's New York City been doing? Well, I talked about this in a previous video, several previous videos. Five recruiting classes of NYPD officers can't become police officers. Sanitation department's being cut. You're about to have a stinky city. Chicago, too. Temperature's going to go through up. Next thing you know, people are going to get hot. And then they go on top of this. Temperatures are going to flare. People aren't going to think about things. And also something else, too. When you have an unbearable smell in the city or the areas that you're in, especially given the fact that a lot of these places these migrants are staying in don't have proper facilities, meaning like they don't have water to shower, that type of stuff there. Yeah, after a while, it's going to get pretty damn nasty and pretty daggone ugly. But the thing is this right here. Why in the world are we still talking about the recreational department? Which, of course, I'm about to bring back up right now. Montbello is my home. I live, work, play, and pray here. Have been for over 40 years. Diane Cooks has spent the last 18 of those years helping families touched by violence through a nonprofit she started. It started when my son Michael was shot. He was a victim of a drive-by. He was uh, paralyzed from the waist down. So he physically challenged in a wheelchair. She wants to spare other families that kind of pain, but says Denver's budget cuts will make it more challenging. It's going to be more work for us. The city cut hours at rec centers this week as part of Mayor Mike Johnson's effort to help the city pay for migrant support. She says the rec centers provide a place for young people to go and keeps them out of trouble. Now I got to get with the partners, the community partners, to figure out what can we do to help our young people and to help families. Not only that, she feels the city has made migrants a more important priority. Oh yes, they have made them a priority. And you know, and the families see it, they feel it, they know it. And so that hurts us a lot because we have to think about like, we don't want them to be out there. We don't want to not help them, but we want to be able to help our own people, our own families, our own community with all the things that we got going on. Johnson says the city's doing everything it can to limit the impact of the cuts. Wednesday, his office told Denver 7 they continue to explore all options to meet budget needs and expects to refine its projected spending on migrants due to several factors, including a slowdown in new arrivals. Diane hopes whatever the city does next won't come at the expense of the youth. So we got to make sure they have something to do that's positive. In Denver, Brandon Richard, Denver story, 7. story, and you guys obviously heard that, but what she's telling you is that with all the funds being going to the migrants uh, or going to take care of the migrants first, what she's trying to tell you is that uh, the resources needed to keep kids occupied from getting into trouble or possibly uh, maybe getting arrested or anything like that. By the way, these rec centers are also great for socialization. And of course, a lot of these rec centers are located in small towns and small areas around the city. Kids go there, they play games, they play sports, they also socialize one another. I know we're living in a bit of an online world nowadays, but kids still do this. If the place is closed or if the hours are gone or if the hours are cut, especially given these times, and by the way, some of these rec centers are also tutoring centers as well, uh, yeah, it becomes a bit of a problem because you see now you've got kids all over the place who could in fact commit crimes. Now, Denver, Colorado is not as bad as, say, New York or Chicago. But think about this really quick. In New York and Chicago, they've already gone through the process of cutting their local rec center, their local community centers, hours as well. Some of these cases, they're actually putting migrants inside these shelters who, quite frankly, don't have the best facilities. And like I said, you could have avoided this entire issue if you just simply built the wall. I think Anna is now finally starting to see this. Of course, she's not going to it as far as detail as what I have on this issue especially as far as the rec centers are concerned. But these rec centers, they are very important because they serve a way to mentor and guide kids and keep them out of trouble. 
Maybe that right there is one of the main driving factors in the city of Chicago of why it is that so many black residents are considering voting Republican. An interview was on MSNBC, by the way. Apparently the women over at MSNBC who were part of that panel that we showed you at the beginning of this segment missed it. Now, while Truss had been a Democrat her entire life and even donated money to Chicago's progressive mayor, Brandon Johnson, the migrant crisis has had a significant impact on her politics. Carter, why are you going to vote Republican for the first time ever? It's simple. The Democratic Party has failed us here in Chicago. Our local government as well as our state government and even our president has made our migrants a priority over American citizens. And so we have to stand up and we have to let them know that it is unacceptable. We have to let them know that you're not going to continue to depend on our vote. You know, Chicago is a democratic stronghold yeah. and we've been that way for years. And we are allowing um, our elected officials to mistreat us. I am excited about being able to vote Republican for the first time. From November 1st of last year to March 5th of this year, state expenditures total more than $31,200,000. It's a lot of money. It's also just the tip of the iceberg. The governor, J.D. Pritzker, has pledged around $182 million in state funds for Chicago, while Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle has committed up to $70 million more in a joint funding plan to ensure migrants sent to the city from Texas have access to wraparound services and health care. Those funds come on top of the state committing 160 million in November to undocumented immigrants for welcome, shelter and independence. That commitment was in addition to $478 million the state has spent since the start of the response, according to the governor. are starting to realize, especially mothers of color are starting to realize with no father in the community that they've got to find other ways to actually help their children out, especially young men out and mentor them. Now, of course, you've got people out there who are trying to mentor young men. I'm very, very much in favor of mentors and coaches being out there. The fact of the matter is that this situation is about to start hitting at home. It's about to start striking at home. And this next clip that I'm about to show you is something that I thought I would never, ever, ever be showing you guys because obviously I do not have a great uh, relationship or much affinity for Dave Rubin or Ann Coulter. But she brought up an extremely good point about five months ago on the Tim Cass IRL special. Take a listen. The ter more terrifying reality is that all, all, the, all the reporters that we've talked to who've covered this said it's mostly young women being raped by the human traffickers. Mm -hmm. It's not, no, it's not condoms. It's, they, they don't care about any of that. Well, that's uh, back to your point on the um, Christian um, underlying of, of our freedom. And we are the freest country in the world. I mean, anyone who comes from any other country, any, any immigrant to Finland makes it less white. It's a very, very white country. Any immigrant to America makes it less free. We are shockingly the freest country in the world in so many ways that other cultures do not understand. And one of the things that our media, is, as Dinesh says, there is there is an operation going. It's, it's I've never seen so much collective lying. Um, but um, the rape cultures around the country are going to be quite a surprise for the feminists. I mean, well, this, this, let me just tell forget. you, ladies, you never had it so good. Let's as never with Americans, you got people from Mexico. You've got all kinds of South American gangs. You've got all kinds of Asian gangs coming in. You've got people from the Middle East coming in through that border. We've talked about this in previous videos. And yet here it is that that R word, that R culture, uh, yeah, you're probably going to be get introduced to another type of culture here in the future, ladies. So um, you get what it is that you vote for is all I'm going to say. We'll probably explore that topic at a later date. I never thought I'd be giving Ann Coulter praise as much as she's grifted, but even somebody can be right twice there. At least a broken clock will be right twice a day. That, by the way, came from the Rubin Report. But as you guys can obviously see, cultures are probably going to start changing within the cities itself. And with all the migrants and, of course, with all the gangs that are about to come in, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have a lot more crime. You're going to have a lot more trouble. And it's also going to affect the youth as well. Now, something that I said earlier in response to an earlier clip that Anna mentioned, and I'm going to go ahead and say it right now, is that one of the biggest reasons why it is, I think the left does not understand the importance of recreational centers and stuff like that is because 
most of the ladies on the left, and including a lot of men, even those ones who don't want to be actual men and find a way to identify as a woman, they don't have kids. If they don't have kids or they're never going to have kids, then how in the hell are they going to understand what kids need? I don't think a single one of the ladies that works at MSNBC has kids or children. I want you guys to remember what I just said just now because I'm probably going to bring it up a little bit later. I'll think of it as a bit of an Easter egg. Uh, but I don't think Anna Kasparian has any kids either. But uh, obviously, if you are a person who doesn't have children, and I don't really have kids either, at least none that I know of, uh, then, uh, yeah, you're probably going to have a, uh, a harder time empathizing with those who do have kids. And also, to go on top of this, you're probably not going to know what kids actually need. You're probably thinking to yourself, video games, no, 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 they don't, they don't need that crap. Kids need actual, honest-to-God guidance. I said earlier about guidance. A lot of these ladies, especially women, are starting to see this. I want you guys to think about something really quick. In 2020, Donald Trump was able to get many, many more married couples. He also got, with those married couples, he also got a lot of white women and women who had kids. But he also lost a lot of single women and single women without any kids. If he increases that margin a lot higher and he also increases married women's margins a lot higher, you're talking about a landslide. By the way, this where it goes across the board, black, white, and Hispanic, because as I've said before in previous videos, a lot of Hispanic women don't like it when illegals cross over and then try to get their citizenship for free, especially after the other Hispanic woman maybe had to fight to get her citizenship. Creates a lot of jealousy. It breeds a lot of that. And, of course, we've also got the economic migrant factor, which we will cover in this video here shortly. So for all the... Pundits out there who can't understand how someone like Donald Trump has managed to increase his support among African American voters in this country. Please just listen to the voters and take what they're saying at face value instead of assuming all sorts of things about them, including allegations of racism or hatred and bigotry in their hearts. In fact, does Joy Reid want to smear this woman as a racist? And does AOC think it's smart politics to deny Truss's lived experience? Because I can recall progressives upholding lived experiences as declarative statements about the world around us. That, that is until it was inconvenient to do so. so. The fact is that the migrant crisis is not some made up issue. And the left sounds laughably out of touch when they claim it is. Telling Americans that they're just gullible voters who bought into a made up right wing narrative is insulting and demonstrates a level of arrogance that honestly makes me pretty sick. Maybe have a little faith in what voters are saying and listen to them. This is politics, you have to meet them where they are, not where you think they should be. Progressives in Congress used to understand this. In fact, just listen to Senator Bernie Sanders address the notion of open borders while speaking to Ezra Klein back in 2015. Anna's got a lot to go, like she's got a lot more to learn. Obviously, okay, I don't give any form of praise to her without giving some form of pushback as well. That right there, what she was saying until it's convenient to do so, that right there is going to be the theme that's going to end this video. I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but there was this guy back in 2016 that progressives fell in love with. His name was Bernie Sanders, and Bernie Sanders, believe it or not, was actually in favor of a closed border. It no, that's, a, that's a Koch Brothers proposal. The really? idea. Of course. I mean, that's a right-wing proposal, which says essentially there is no United States. But it, anybody it, can, it would make a lot me. of global poor richer, wouldn't it? And it'd make everybody in America poor. Then you're doing away with, with the concept of a nation state. And I don't think there's any country in the world which believes in that. I think we have to raise wages in this country. I think we have to do everything that we can to create the millions of jobs. You think we should open the borders and bring in a lot of low-wage workers? What do you think maybe we should try to get jobs for those kids? So I think from a moral responsibility, we've got to do work with the rest of the industrialized world to, uh, to address the problems of international poverty. But you don't do that by making people in this country. Anna Kasparian, Jink, and all the progressives, they failed to see that Bernie Sanders was obviously pretty daggone weak. What he was saying there was actually for the most part true. I don't know how much of a Koch brothers proposal that it is. Bernie is not exactly what we say um, good when it comes to the honesty meter. But still at the same time, though, yeah, he's actually correct. Bringing in all these migrants just brings in cheap labor. And, of course, to go on top of this, 
You've also got a lot of these migrants who, by the way, are economic migrants sending the money that they make and the benefits they're getting from the federal government off the taxpayer, they're sending it back to their home nations, not putting it into the U.S. economy. They're basically fleecing is what they're doing, and I think that Anna's starting to figure this out. But then again, though, when it comes to Bernie Sanders, you should have known exactly how weak this man was going to be or how weak this man really and truly was, not so much because he cucked like some like Tim Pooler then would say, but really the thing that should have told you that Bernie Sanders was going to cuck, well, was this. corroded fart, sad-eyed socialist, seated the stage to two very, very angry women, got off the stage. That right there alone should have told you that this guy right here was not meant for leadership. A true leader would have had Secret Service or they would have had somebody direct these ladies away from the stage or he would have at least stayed on the stage with them. He would have looked like a complete total idiot while he was up there, but of course he would have at least looked a little bit more, um, how do I say, he would have looked a little bit more commanding. But then again, though, Bernie's not exactly what we call a commanding person. This is the same guy when posed about giving back his tax cut, he refused to do so. Real cheap skate he is. That's the truth about most socialists. The vast majority of these socialists, of course, are in fact grifters. You know, Anna, in a lot of ways, when she talked about when it was convenient to do so, what she, in a lot of ways, was actually saying was that people like AOC, and this right here also includes not just the rest of the squad, this also includes streamers like, say, Hassan and Vosh and even Destiny to a certain, well, Destiny not so much, but definitely those two that I just mentioned earlier. They're all actually capitalists. Whether they know it or not, they actually really and truly are. They're in this business to make money like I am. They're in this business to make money like you guys are. And while it is that they preach socialism and all this type of stuff, their lifestyles obviously scream the exact opposite. Fact of the matter is, is that they don't really and truly care about the nation. They don't really care about the immigration thing as far as uh, immigration itself. They just care about the grift itself. They don't care that this rampant immigration is tearing up people's lives. By the way, a lot of these are people who voted for Joe Biden and voted for the current administration by these people's, um, how do I say, uh, influence. One of the worst moments in this country, or at least one of the worst moments in internet history, in my opinion, I understand it may be a bit hyperbolic, was the minute that Joe Rogan was asked about politics right before the 2020 election. And Joe Rogan basically said, uh, dude, I'm an idiot. I'm a dummy. Uh, don't ask me about politics. And I was like, thank God. Then all of a sudden he said, ask Kyle Kalinske and David Packman's dumbasses. Joe's channel, Joe's podcast, is supposed to go to the everyman. I just wonder how many people he sent in the wrong direction with that tape. Basically, what I'm saying is that I think that Anna Kasparian is finally waking up to the realization that not only is immigration affecting now kids, rec centers, and of course, changing people's minds and actually destroying the left. I think she finally realizes that not only is that there the case, but I'm pretty sure she'll come out and say it real soon. Of course, she's even said it in a previous video, which I did a video on, but she's about to go full blown with it, that this entire socialism, open borders, immigration thing is nothing more than a good old fashioned grift. And that right there is the truth about this situation. These people have no idea the amount of chaos that they've allowed into the nation. But of course, we will cover that in my gang's video come tomorrow. So make sure you guys stick around for that. Please tell me what you guys think in the comment section. I want you guys to please give me your honest to God thoughts. Tell me what you think about what Anna was saying. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comment section, and I'll see you guys later.